right uh, friends uh, when you talk about uh, when you talk about uh, the entire am i audible sir hello hello fine fine ranji ji you are audible you are audible yes, good, good, good. yes. Uh, you know when we talk in terms of ayurveda the ayurveda science of life uh, one of the things that has to be our north star our governance particular aspect is that ultimately an ayurved physician is an a direct particular representative of lord dhanvantri he is the authority and he whether you are in industry however successful you may be or whether you are a student or you know other kind of allied courses we must understand that ultimately ayurved emits at the hands of the ayurved physician and that's something that's a given and that's the reason why i call uh, an ayurved physician a very one composite intellect intellect you know the responsibility is that the ayurved physician for over 3 4000 years has been able to take forward on their shoulders and bring to us uh, in its current form bring the tradition to us in its current form is is a very great kind of evolution that the ayurvedic uh, physician has has taken forward not only in the therapeutics but even in the pharmaceutics because ultimately they they took forward the entire science and you know uh, the entire uh, amount of uh, how ayurveda has also changed from the days of akhanda bharat to what union of india today represents uh, there is a huge difference in the manner in which ayurveda has changed not only market size wise not only disease burden wise not only burden of death wise the public health challenges that has come and uh, nobody really intended for an ayurved physician to be only just a practitioner it happened as a matter of evolution as a matter of evolution there became a difference between therapeutics and patient and pharmaceutics and manufacturer the entire you know we pride ourselves in dhoop papeshwar to say that we are the oldest uh, ayurved uh, manufacturing company in, in the private sector uh, i do believe that the oldest ayurvedic manufacturing enterprise is singha darbar dawakhana uh, which is more than 350 years old and it is located in nepal and it's still operating it's a public sector undertaking in the private sector i believe we are we still have this little claim of being the oldest but friends please understand that uh, you know ayurveda has gone through great amount of challenges and great amount of particular uh, you know uh, changes that has come about and uh, around 150 170 years ago is when this entire identity of a manufacturer actually came into came into place and uh, you know we need to acknowledge these changes and how has the sector dealt with see that the, our ayurved physicians right here our ayurved physicians right here are in nodal positions of understanding policy demarcating policy drawing up futuristic plans and basically administering the entire sector one of the uh, green institutions not mentioned here is something that dr uh, katoch uh, is is now handling which is the entire drug control vertical that has come from Uh, which is uh, getting evolved and i'm sure in the next few years you're going to see great amount of progress that's coming there uh, please understand friends this is the gearing up of the nation for tremendous amount of potential to come the squares that i have marked in in light cream are like icmr who counts csir Uh, indian agriculture research institutes as well as pharmax and this is where the ayurved syntax still has to form its own particular identity but th- there are probably a dozen more luminaries in ayurveda who have not been mentioned here uh, my friend in industry anurag sharma is now a member of parliament and uh, this is how ayurvedic sector is moving from strength to strength and you know we need to we need to really embrace these changes that are coming we have to understand that the manner in which we have received ayurveda from our seniors is not the way that we are going to be leaving it for our next generation and what our responsibilities in all of that are going to be is something that's going to be our entire responsibility how we conduct ourselves how we take ourselves forward is going to be the entire challenge now uh, my entire discussion is really on the founders day for uh, the 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 students and the faculty at iiaps and you know some of my colleagues uh, in industry who have joined and physicians but i'm going to focus a little bit on the students and the next slide uh, i'm going to be talking about 
a mantra that comes to mind. This was a mantra that had evolved mainly for medicinal plants to how they should be or what is a good particular mantra for, for a successful Ayurvedic uh, uh, business. But when you take into account the demonstration of Ayurveda, that would be the hands of B farm, M farm, D farm uh, graduates. Uh, please understand this mantra for all the highlights that I've given there. Uh, it is talking about sustainably sourced from organically certified forest or farms, more farms than forests in time to come, documentarily supporting traceability and legal procurement. This kindly adjust era is over. It is time we come down to absolute legalities and in fair, full compliance of fair trade guidelines. Uh, we won't be able to continue the exploitative process of raw materials much forward. We would have to come to terms with understanding the real price, the real particular labor, the real wages that need to be paid, not only to a farmer, but also a collector. And at all points of time, whether it's a classical medicine or a patent and proprietary medicine, the adherence to Shastra Shuddhata, the adherence to ancient texts, the syntax is going to be more and more important. GMPs are going to change. They have not changed since January, probably 2001. But trust me, in the next five years, I'm sure Dr. Katoch will cover the entire part. They are, they are set out to be changed drastically. And you may even talk about in complete overhauling of the entire quality monograph. So when you talk in terms of B farm, D farm, M farm, and you talk in terms of gearing up for Ayurvedic, Ayurvedic sector, Ayurvedic industry, Ayurvedic manufacturing, or any kind of drug regulatory, or any kind of research, or any kind of laboratory function, please understand this has to be your responsibility, your North Star, that you have to become proficient in all such angles in times to come, let's divide out the entire scope for a pharmacy graduate. Ultimately, what do we want to do? We want to bring about authentic, standardized, safe and efficacious medicines. We are very clear about the fact as to what should the consumer, what should society get from us. And if you place the Ayurvedic pharmacist right in center and divide out the entire scope into research, into production, into trade, as well as into development. You know, there are these subset and sub functions that I've mentioned in this entire matter, and I'll go on to talk about each one of them. But this is entire aspect that that would be the kind of a North Star, a guiding light, a, a kind of a thing to look forward to, because I want the pharmacy graduates to be crystal clear about one part, that in the coming times, the coming times for scope for pharmacy graduates is not going to be the same like what it has been till now. Uh, there probably have been employment difficulties and career difficulties for pharmacy graduates. But in the coming times, there is going to be greater impetus. I'm sure Dr. Katoch probably has some good news also to share with you in terms of not only uh, additional uh, recognition of the entire academic courses. But, you know, these are things that are on the anvil. We have to take this entire thing forward and move ahead. Let's take a look at scope of research. Research generally talks of efficacious and uh, 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 validation as well as safety studies. I'm going a little bit beyond that. And I'm talking that you are a true academic and you know you want to take a look at the scope and research. The entire thing is immense. When you talk in terms of being a master, as far as the materia medica goes, when you when you talk about being a cogent reader of not only the Ayurvedic pharmacopoeia of India, Ayurvedic for, uh, formulary of India, but also talk about the monographs that have appeared in European pharmacopoeia, in US pharmacopoeia, they comment upon the, the monographs that are being finalized by American herbal pharmacopoeia, the challenge is huge. And this is the entire scope in research that one needs to really, really uh, pay attention to. Uh, you know, there are finer points of quality which are not today highlighted uh, at, in the at industry level, whether I should do shade drying or whether I should do uh, sun drying. How is it that I can do the entire uh, stability studies, not only of crude material, how do I manage the entire inventory on the basis of, of viryata, of the entire materials that are there with my entire source. All such kind of issues are going to be challenges over a period of time. 
supply uh, is not going to be meeting demand of raw materials and you are going to have to look for substitutes how does we talk how do we talk about such substitutes how do we vet such substitutes uh, india is going to open up more and more raw materials are going to come in from africa they're probably going to come in from asian countries there's going to be a geographical variation how are we going to deal with the rasagunya virya uh, vipak prabhav kalpanas uh, in terms of quality assurance all such issues are going to be challenges of course all of this oversight lies with the ayurvedic physician but as pharmacists you are going to be, it is going to be expected of you to pick up the entire load and when you talk about getting an identity syntax research a definition in trans, with translational science in modern syntax uh, to me the pharmacist is going to play a very very major role i will call it a pivotal role because you know the public health profile and the occupation of ayurved physicians is a given this pandemic has told you how vital ayurveda is to public health and i am sure whether people want to call us quacks people want to call us whatever it is that they want to talk to us about remember one thing for 5000 years the truth has prevailed and it will prevail again and the only truth is benefit to the consumer the only truth is your ability to manage and combat disease a disorder in ailments and that can nobody can take that away from you so whether people like rasaushadhis or people have some problems about heavy metals it is their problem ultimately please understand safely and shastra shuddhata employed gives you absolutely quality medicines that are from ayurveda rasa shastra and these things cannot be ignored this you have to talk about your career not only of characterization not only understanding the pyrometric treatment you have to talk about understanding the entire why put on sanskars 51 times 21 times 14 times 100 times 1000 times why is this put on sanskars going what does exactly bhavda dravyas do how does nanotechnology that the world is raving about how do i apply it to my entire to my entire bhasmas all such issues are going to be important for students and these are things that you know are going to be challenges uh, i see a lot of role being played once again by the pharmacist i can tell you in my company uh, there are today the company is is practically run as far as the manufacturing goes by ayurved physicians we are very proud uh, to say that and uh, they are handling major responsibility uh, the young generation of these ayurved physicians are dealing with regulatory kind of uh, challenges and uh, trust me they are doing it extremely competently they are self taught but imagine if uh, they also had a colleague for, who was m farm or b farm who had all of this exposure i think we would be much better and i think this is something that you know i speak for my industry colleagues that we have to look forward to take another scope in production whether it's the simple kind of production you talk you know i've talked of shodhan vidhi and bhavna vidhi to be very simple operations they are they are as simple as for us kada and kalka and hima and fanta the aspect is you have to do them there should not be any shortcut and you know there are a lot of things in ayurved that are not defined the logic is not known they are very expensive but you know we have to do it we don't have a choice so if your raw material comes the trader has sold it to you on the basis of you know the whole particular bardan but the ultimately you have to do the cleaning and hand sorting you have to remove the debris adult trains and you know stop crying on this entire issue that you know the trader is doing this adulteration and that adulteration we should be able to recognize and do this now this kind of skill set development can only come from experience and this entire introduction has to be from an educational background and this is something that your course should go into before even the complex kind of things are done with and please understand in a college uh, we need to and especially in a pharmacy college we need to stop having pilot level manufacturing facilities please come in with absolutely production scale because it's very very important that we deal with production scale and the students get that kind of experience before they join the industry because you know uh, pilot is pilot and when it goes into production scale uh, whatever scale up that one may think and imagine the aspect is you have to be right up there you have to be proficient to that particular level and you know classical dosage forms are not a joke uh these are things that we have to deal with moving on towards you know scope as far as quality assurance and quality control goes 
uh, you know, all kinds of machines are available. Sophistication is available, whether it's a GC, HPTLC, AS, ICP. How does it apply to the Ayurved syntax? This understanding of technology, the way modern pharmaceutics and modern pharma, you know, these machines were made for a different cause and we are using it for a completely different kind of assay or a, or a spectra. How does that apply to me? How does that apply to my traditional syntax, my ancient particular medicine? This kind of correlation, cogency again, uh, cogency is only possible when you have mastered it. And uh, again, I, I, I say a pharmacy college should have a sophisticated laboratory uh, because a pharmacy college is also a support science as far as industry goes. And as quality control parameters, as monographs, even in API starts getting upgraded, to me, greater and greater role is going to be played by pharmacy graduates and it, it's going to be extremely important. And, you know, I'll repeat again because I need to make this point very, very clearly. That Rasaushadis is a coming particular science that is going to be implemented. When you talk in terms of chronic and you talk of pandemic and you talk of, you know, absolutely debilitating kind of health challenges, public health challenges that are coming down, countries locking down, please understand the modern science query is not going to spare any and, avail any and every available particular source in medicine. And traditional science is going to get the spotlight. And when it comes into the spotlight, exacting standards, exacting SOPs, it doesn't matter if you use, continue to use Gobar, you continue to use Babul and Khair in terms of the entire fuel that is there. But you must be very, very clearly Shastra Shuddha as if you did it 2000 years ago. And that's the challenge as far as an MFARM, BFARM goes to understand the kind of responsibility that is there on the manufacturer's shoulder because the Ayurvedic physician, a Pratik of Lord Dhanvantri, has delegated his entire trust to you, supply medicines and support his clinic. You have to come true. You have to say every batch of yours is a test. Whether you are Ayurvedic, Ayurvedic is good, Ayurvedic is Shaswat, are you Ayurvedic is a kind of a test that every time every manufacturer has to come through every batch to me is is your first batch and it has to be your best batch and that is the manner in which we do it moving onwards towards productions and companies i will go on talk about uh, you know regulatory i can probably give a lecture of the next one and two hours on only regulatory uh, particular challenges but these are some these are only some of the various regulators that regulations that basically you must be proficient with. If you choose to manage the entire regulatory aspect in a company, if you choose that you are going to be responsible for the regulatory aspect, you have to keep abreast of all of these current notifications. And the most important part about these current notifications is that they are not static. Please understand, Ayurved as a sector is coming into its being. The identity is still getting formed. You still have not been defined as an entity under pollution control. You still have not been defined as a science, a traditional science, which requires exemption under Biological Diversity Act. You still have, have not been defined properly under Drugs and Magic Remedies Act. The aspect is that there are acts which are applicable to you. You are supposed to comply, which is true. Probably there is a new act which Dr. Katoch is probably drafting right now, which is a parallel drugs and cosmetics act meant only for Ayurveda, uh, Yunani, Sutta and uh, homeopathy. Now, all of these are challenges that come about and regulatory compliance, regulatory compliance is going to be 60% of the attention span of any entrepreneur in times to come. So please understand that if you are a pharmacy graduate who is going to focus only on regulatory aspect, whether you wish to become a drug controller or a drug inspector or licensing authority, please understand whichever way that you do it, whatever aspect, research, whether it's production, I'll be talking about trade, I'll be talking in terms of about whether even if you think of pharmacology as a, as a pharmacy graduate, please understand proficiency and a mastery on that particular vocation is required. If you are wanting to become an entrepreneur, the world is your entire market. Please go ahead. But proficiency, knowledge about each one of these things, the chalta hai. 
the adjustment attitude is passe. Please do not expect it to be in this online zamana. The aspect is the world has changed. You better get smart and you better get compliant and you are already late. So please ensure that with complete knowledge that we do these kind of situations. You know, uh, whilst you're talking in terms of production, let's let's go down to a GMP upgradation. I have said it's not not reviewed since January of 2001. And then the extended deadline was April of 2001. Now, please understand this GMP is going to get upgraded probably into Schedule M and probably into WHO. And these challenges is something that we need to take. The SOPs that we write about, don't be surprised if public health medicine is going to get procured in large numbers, large numbers. You talk about the TB health program, their public health budget goes into thousands of crores. Imagine Sanchamani Vati going into thousands of crores purchased by all the states. Imagine the Chavan Prash going into 15,000 crores worth of public purchase. Now, when it goes into that, the kind of SOP that is required, the kind of special wheels get oil ask for it ask for these extra extra classes because when you come down to an industry the industry will require your working knowledge of all such they require you to be navigatable navigating in all such kind of syntax and you know this is where you you know you have to come up to mark so these, uh, you know, even if the curriculum, official curriculum does not change really, aspect like this, we can change. Then though it's a professional course, we can always educate ourselves and, you know, get into, get into more knowledge. And, you know, these things are for the asking. In the days of internet, these things are for the asking. I, in my opinion, if there is a will, there is certainly a way. I'll move on from production. I've moved on now to development. Uh, uh, I talked about farmers earlier. I talked about collectors earlier. I talked about variations in terms of, uh, you know, the, the medicinal plant raw materials that we get. Uh, I'm talking about working with stakeholders, which hitherto we have not worked with. I'm talking about training modules to be determined everywhere. I'm talking about, you know, writing down the entire SOPs as to what is an acceptable product for industry. I'm talking about, you know, taking the TLC also angle right down to the farm source. All such angles is something that's going to be very, very crucial, very, very important. You know, uh, TLC, HPTLC, the manner in which we read it, what is our product? What is important for it? How do we protect the entire herb coming from maybe 1800 kilometers into our factory? How it should be packed? You know, today packaging is in any available bardan. Now, all these things are about to change. The labeling is going to be done right there at source. Uh, the traceability is going to be demanded. These kind of things that are there, development just does not mean new product development, you know, fancy packaging. Of course, it means all of that. But, you know, launching new products and, you know, all that fancy and the aura about FMCG and all such kind of things, it's there. The attraction is very much there. If you're an Antapunap, yes, you must come. For all the big companies that are mentioned, please understand that there are 20 more large companies which is the space in the market that can come about. And, you know, you could be an entrepreneur into that. But understanding new dosage forms, innovation, creativity. What is it that you bring differently? How is it that you are going to represent the Shastra in its true form, in its formulation, and present to a trusting Ayurvedic physician the exact syntax which is given in pharmacopoeia? I think these kind of challenges is something that's very, very, very important. I'll move on now from... Uh, new dosage development and, de and development as such, to talking about trade and dispensing. Uh, I am not going to talk about, I am not going to talk about the career and the vocational uh, avenues that are available for uh, graduates uh, to become uh, pharma salesmen. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, please don't become pharma salesmen. There are others who can become pharma salesmen. Uh, you are professionals, you are D-farm, B-farm, uh, please ensure that probably if you want to go into marketing, 
there is one more course an mba uh, marketing or some kind of other exposure that you do by which you gain that entire marketing proficiency but don't join the entire industry if you're doing it for experience it's a different issue but don't join the entire industry as a pharma representative trust me leave it separately there are others who can do that entire job let them do it you are a b farm you are an m farm you are a d farm i want you to basically set your sights a little bit higher and in the coming age of of e-commerce or you know uh, prescription uh, generation uh, your marketing kind of diploma your marketing kind of additional qualification is really going to help you a lot uh, are you going to be creative innovative about telemedicine pandemic has shown that all such kind of online meetings can can continue one really does not have to travel all the way interstate or to other city to attend such kind of memorial lectures you can do it right there from your entire agenda and schedule in your headquarters and you know this is something that's there and please bring you know that mba and the diploma that i said you know you'll bring competence to it now uh, something that again dr katoch might uh, uh, might declare is is something that you know uh, as in industry we fear we fear it uh, dr katoch may talk about or or i urge him to talk about you know sale license uh, for the anvil for better part of 10 years a sale lines license has been mooted by uh, ministry of ayush as industry we have always said there is a dearth of graduates and uh, you know there's no way that uh, a sale license will can really be established because you don't want uh, just signature uh, to come from a graduate you want actual contribution also and uh, we've been trying to prevent it i don't think the situation has changed i don't think those many pharmacy graduates are available uh, in the entire all of india to man the 40 42 lakh uh, retail outlets uh, that uh, stock and house ayurvedic medicine uh, even if you say 1/10th of those uh, retail outlets are are manning the schedule e1 kind of drugs uh, still the dearth is is very much there but you know that topic ultimately is the government's policy decision we have to know our limitations also but you know at the same time uh, please understand that there is a huge difference between ayurved dispensing and allopathic dispensing allopathic dispensing has a very set sop in the manner in which it should be done ayurvedic dispensing has to be upgraded from what the traditional has been followed till now it has to definitely be upgraded in the manner in which the entire dispensing is going to take place it can't be you know that same pudi karkana that that has uh, you know that we have seen come through the ages it has to move to a great particular upgradation and uh, you know even if you choose to go into trade and have your own particular you know chain of stores or and decide to do dispensing these kind of chains are coming up and they're doing fairly well i mean there's great commerce there please upgrade the entire thing because there is no way the dispensing of medicine has to be done with respect with complete information for the consumer not only in terms of prescription but complete batch number and all such protocols filed and you know this kind of situation has to be done so there's a huge definition when it comes down to ayurvedic dispensing as such and uh, coming to the end of my entire presentation there's a little something that you know uh, i've spoken to my colleagues also in industry some uh, some of them gave some comments and you know uh, a bee farm from ayurved should be a plus plus you know not only should you know everything that is there in terms of modern pharmaceutics but you know in terms of understanding the entire ayurved science he has to be that plus plus that he comes into part uh, i have spoken mainly about uh, you know the research angle or the quality assurance and all such parts but uh, you know this kind of uh, internship with industry 6 months into two cycles uh, this is the kind of internship that a graduate must do before you let him go uh, industry colleagues also have to note that we have to open our doors for this kind of human resource development we have to basically also be the second hand of the clap by which more competent resources will be available to us uh, in the coming times uh, some of the people you train may uh, go and become entrepreneurs in front of you uh, so be it 
but the aspect is like this you know these are changing methods and and these are certain points that have written i will not go into detail but these are certain points uh, that are there and uh, sir we need many more pharmacy colleges if uh, education uh, samrats are not uh, getting pharmacy colleges i will urge iiaps itself basically talk in terms of having branches and uh, take it forward because i can tell you very clearly that you are on the threshold of a huge growth cycle in ayurved uh, i have talked about ayurved physicians being key placements in policy and uh, policy uh, action will follow and good action will follow and you have to be ready for all of these kind of situation uh, take into account uh, this is a 2016 map of the prevalence of ayurveda the world over and uh, you know wherever you are seeing light green is where ayurveda still potential has to go and uh, exactly uh, chinese medicine is just opposite of all of that but we have to grow ayurveda on its own strength we don't have to grow ayurveda on just phytochemicals and you know the modern syntax or you know take in any which way uh, commerce should be done you know food is a food and medicine is a medicine that which has a physiological impact therapeutic impact is a medicine now no sense uh, packaging it like a herbal tea or no sense packaging it like some haldi dood and you know uh, making people sick you and me are aware that these kind of things should not be done which cannot be done these are my views personal views but uh, this is the potential that ayurveda will will grow and in all of this we have to be crystal clear that all the professional courses whether doctors are required for healthcare or b farm m farm d farms are required for other kind of uh, production and research and and pharmacological uh, clinical and safety studies management all such kind of competencies are going to come into play and uh, uh, the world is or rather let me put it to you you are your own limitation so you know the, the, whatever vision that you set out the next 50 years in ayurved uh, you can actually achieve it so you know uh, you are your own limitation and uh, i'll borrow from exactly uh, dr professor anand choudhury's lecture uh, bright brilliant uh, bachelors uh, or masters or diploma holders uh, be that bright spot wherever you go i thank iiaps and dr joban moda and his entire team for considering me and uh, thank you for this entire patient hearing uh, i'm sorry i could not see any one of you i hope i was audible all throughout thank you thank you very much sir yes you were audible throughout the lecture and the lecture the speech you gave was really informative and uh, the way uh, sir has explained the evaluation of our ayurveda and ayurveda pharmaceutical sec uh, sector from akhand bharat to till date was was just an uh, amazing point of from your speech and the challenges which uh, our field has uh, faced challenges as well as changes which our field has uh, faced was uh, really explained very well the ayurvedic physicians currently in current position in current era of our nation has spreaded all over starting from manufacturing to any clinical uh, institution research institution including legislative uh, sector and at uh, government sector so we can say that currently this era is uh, the perfect era to design ayurved in this perspective and the mantra which sir has provided to achieve the success in our sector was just perfect uh, challenges or scope in research uh, in particular ayurvedic pharmaceutical sector sir has explained that there are so many endless challenges including rasagunu virya vipak of our drugs and how we can uh, elaborate their importance and role in uh, manufacturing as well as in clinical practice i would uh, love to bring your kind concern that sir Gujarat Ayurved University has already started such kind of pharmaceutical research in M Pharma, and uh, uh, many more studies are uh, on the way. And we have already started to correlate and impact of rasa of any substance, and how we can uh, standardize it depending upon its season and method of shodhan and uh, effect of bhavna. 
that has been done and are being polished right now currently and in coming era uh, the various research articles are going to be published and the uh, importance of rasa aushadi particular sir has mentioned in this pandemic or any infectious disease or any chronic disease yes raw material and standardization is is so much important in this uh, era and yes we will uh, look forward to your all the suggestions and we will try to cope up with the industrial need including large scale production exposure and uh, the internship program thank you very much for your kind words sir and uh, now moving session forward i would like to uh, call upon dr jignesh kevalya sir uh, to continue the session thank you very much Good.